Okay, so we are back to talk about the personality disorders. <clears throat> this is sort of an interesting unit of content because you might find traits of people you know in some of these categories. <clears throat> Briefly, our objectives are to identify various types of personality disorders, identify some of the predisposing factors for personality disorders, although we have to be careful with that because some of them have very complicated um, causes. Um, and we're going to discuss appropriate nursing interventions associated with borderline personality disorder. And we'll discuss various treatment modalities relevant to the treatment of personality disorders. In particular, we're going to focus on borderline. It is the most um, commonly diagnosed uh, personality disorder, and it's the most commonly seen in psych. The others are sort of... Um, almost a little outdated, I don't want to say, but uh, we'll kind of get into that discussion. But your borderline personality disorder folks end up on psych units frequently, and we'll discuss the reasons for that and how we address their needs. And then there are some treatment modalities um, for borderline. Some of the other disorders have them as well, but um, generally speaking, borderline is where we're going to focus for this presentation and also for your exam. Um, defining personality, it's inner experience and outer experience. It's a combination of thoughts, emotions, behaviors that make a person who they are. It's the way you view and experience the world. It's the way you act upon the world. It's the way other people see you too. Um, shaped by multiple, multiple factors, inherited factors and genes. Everybody's born with sort of an innate temperament. Um, if you had a family of five children, each one of them would have a unique personality. And some of that comes hardwired right into the package. So that's important to remember because not everyone who has the same experience growing up will develop the same personality traits. They're sort of inborn and then they're nurtured. Um, there's environment and life experience. That's the nurture part of nature versus nur nurture. <clears throat> So it's sort of, you know, your innate temperament responds to the world, and then your culture will shape your personality. You'll find more people um, with things in common, more personality traits in common among members of a culture. Um, and our personality traits are enduring. They're not transient. They're not habits. They are patterns of perceiving, relating to people, thinking about your environment and yourself. And so they become very deeply ingrained. It becomes disordered, like everything else, when it causes you trouble. When these traits become inflexible, when they are maladaptive, when the way that you respond to the world causes some kind of impairment or distress, people with personality disorders get so inflexible with their coping mechanisms, um, they tend to overuse certain coping mechanisms and defense mechanisms, and they just sort of butt heads with the world and the world pushes them back. Um, there is a biological aspect, dopamine, um, norepinephrine, serotonin, all of these things make us more or less likely to respond to the world in a different way. Um, so our experiences sort of play off that and there's um, an interplay. Personality disorders begin in childhood. We usually start to see those traits that person's inborn temperament meets with negative life experiences, and then it becomes a pattern of behaving, of interpreting, of experiencing the world. So they can last into adulthood, although personality in children is fairly fluid. It's a little bit plastic. It doesn't fully develop until adulthood. So we can actually intervene with kids to sort of nurture um, a little more flexibility, a little more adaptive uh, interaction with the world so that these traits don't persist into adulthood. So you usually don't get a diagnosis, a firm diagnosis, until at least the age of 18. You will start to see some things like your antisocial personality disorders usually start out as conduct disorders. That's something that we'll learn in <clears throat> childhood and adolescent um, psychiatric care. Um, the person is usually unaware that their thoughts or behaviors are inappropriate or that they vary from cultural norms. They kind of feel like the world is stacked against them sometimes. Um, 
they don't always perceive that it's the way that they encounter the world that has to change. So treatment usually takes a lot of effort um, to sort of get into those patterns of behaving and thinking and feeling, get some awareness and some insight. And so you're looking usually, although this can vary, at little changes over time and not, um, it's not like with a schizophrenic patient who gets their medication and three weeks later they're coherent. This is something that is going to take a lot of time to deal with. Medications can sometimes assist with personality disorders, especially if there are comorbid things going on, but they're generally not a quick fix. You need a lot of therapy and a lot of support for people with personality disorders. Um, <clears throat> A lot of them, by the way, will not seek care for their personality disorder uh, because they're not aware that it is their problem. They just kind of can't understand why uh, the world is so frustrating for them or their relationships don't work. So they may seek counseling in like a family setting or they may seek therapy for comorbid depression, anxiety, substance use, um, very common but the general characteristics of a personality disorder, interpersonal relationships are strained to the max because this person cannot flex to another person's needs. Their disordered behavior is so ingrained into them that it tends to cause a lot of conflict with other human beings. Um, there's usually low self-esteem. Again, if, if everything you do results in negative feedback from the world, um, you sometimes personalize it. Now, there are exceptions to this. As we go through the different disorders, you'll see some personality disorders are more prone to lead to low self-esteem than others. But generally, that's a characteristic. You have poor cause and effect reasoning. They just don't learn from their experiences. Most of us have a negative experience. We make a mistake. We reflect on it. We do something different and we change. People with personality disorders really don't perceive that the problem is with their behavior. So it can be very difficult to um, get them to adapt to the world. And the more negative experiences they have, the more ingrained the behaviors become. They have issues with authority, rules, etc., and they tend to end up isolating. Exceptions to that as well, um, and we'll get into that. There are, um, each personality disorder has its own characteristics, but these are general ones. They're grouped into three clusters, A, B, and C, and they are frequently characterized as the weird ones, the wild ones, and the worried ones. A, or odd or eccentric patterns of behavior and thinking, they're the weird ones. Oh, sorry, cat's on the keyboard. Let's go back. So you have your paranoid personality disorder, not to be confused with paranoid delusions or the paranoia that occurs with psychosis. Um, schizoid personality disorder, again, not to be confused with schizophrenia or schizoaffective anything. Um, we will cover these in a separate video. Schizotypal personality disorder. Then we have cluster B. These people are characterized as dramatic, emotional, or erratic. These are the people with the overly sensitive temperaments. Um, or the overly extroverted temperaments. They are wild. So antisocial personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, histrionic personality disorder, and narcissistic personality disorder. Again, we'll cover each one in a little more detail. And we have cluster C, which is our anxious and fearful personality disorders. These are the worried ones. Avoidant personality disorder, dependent personality disorder, and obsessive compulsive. Um, but that's just an overview. And I'm going to kind of cut out here. I have a Harry Potter video that I made that I will share with you guys um, just to give you another sort of feeling for the different personality disorders.